in your morph lane. Going down bottom will be Mushi the on the puck, and begins. that does leave Lanham as the Alchemist on the dire side. We've got Navi US Fogged. The Shadow Shaman had a sensational Scarath Mage performance earlier. Snake King, your Weaver mid will be, well, 1437 denying a creep. Is he actually... What's going on here? Some Fissure blocking shenanigans? Now Korok, okay. Blocks the bottom lane, then he heads mid. So he does draw the lane back for Brax. And, you know, Sinner, I feel this is important to discuss because you mentioned how bad Older Titan can be on the Dire off lane, but this Fissure block makes it more manageable. I, I'm surprised to see Brax not blocking the wave a little bit himself because even with that Fissure block, the wave is actually going to start pretty far down. I guess he's going to get experience here since Alchemist and Puck can't pressure him out of the lane, but... Yeah, we'll see if, if Brax can uh, can manage to keep distorting the equilibrium, or even better, get it to his own tower. That's the ideal situation for him right now. I gotta say, this mid lane is not gonna be fun for Korok. He's up against a Lich Morphling as a melee hero, and an Earthshaker to boot. I, I don't think we're gonna see an out-of-control carry ES unless he gets some help this game. Yeah, the moment, what DK are gonna do is they'll be pulling the lane back to their own cliff, and... Korok doesn't have the best tools Radiant's of dealing with it. You can try to push with Fissure, but the way you usually handle this kind of creep equilibrium is that either you mess up the equilibrium by pulling the aggro by issuing attack commands, or you push out the lane really fast so that it reaches the enemy tower. But it's a level 1 Fissure, it's not gonna work. And DK can actually just keep controlling the lane, just run in circles with the creeps, and they can keep denying with MMY. Korok is gonna have a really hard time. He's doing a great job though. He's actually. got 3 this CS. Is, no, this is really good. good. Really, he's, really he's seen good. less creeps, and he's up against two ranged tiers, but I think the one other concern is that they can kill him once they get to, say, level 5 or so. If you dive him with the level 3 waveform and the Frost Blast, that's a lot of burst damage. Top lane, meanwhile, your Timber Salt dropping pretty low. Ice, 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 not having the best time here, and chewing through his regen rather quickly at that. Weaver, Shadow Shaman, I'd say one of the better combos to deal with a, a Timber at the early levels, but later on... When the reactive armor stacks up, it gets quite a bit tougher. What's the interaction between shackles and reactive armor? How many stacks do you get while you're shackled? Is it every second? I'm not actually sure. Or Because shackles deals a lot of instances of damage, right? It's like yeah. a continuous stream. That's correct. So it's, not, it's not one damage. So what I'm wondering is, let's say Ice 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 gets level 2 reactive armor. How quickly does he go up to 8 armor? Because at that point, Weaver is like tickling. Oh, Korok, this is bad. Alchemist City mid, he's even got the acid spray, and now they go. They drop the spray, they're channeling the stun, and it will be first blood. Lanham claims it. DK, to me, Sindarin, they're at their best when they are roaming early on. We've seen fantastic lion roaming from MMY and Lanham. We've seen MMY's Marana has single handedly carried them to the point where they were overpicking the Marana even, and well, already they're finding a bit of momentum here, and they need it as they will find first blood in this game. Exactly, they're really good when they're roaming early on, but the previous two games they've been trying to roam with like weird heroes. Juggernaut and so, Skyra, which actually the funny part is worked in two other games. Yeah, two other games the Juggernaut worked, but I, I think that honestly it might have been a little bit of a fluke, because in those two games, first of all they did better a better job at farming, but at the same time it makes you think, couldn't they just have done the same with other heroes, right? Was, was Juggernaut actually the driving force? Was he amazing in those games? Or would an alternative just have been better? And maybe DK it just, just analyzed... Off guard. Yeah, it maybe, really did. Maybe DK analyzed the situation incorrectly, and they were like, wow, this Juggernaut is actually amazing, when perhaps another solution could have been better. Well, it seems like they've at least gone away from it. They're letting the Alchemist play the roaming role in this game. Well, it sets them up an easy first blood. And could have probably got that with a Juggernaut, actually. <laughs> that kill. They could have gone with a Juggernaut. <laughs> they had the right rune, and I believe there was no vision for Navi US of what the rune was as it's on top, so a bit unfortunate for them, but well, with that being said, Lanham doing a nice job here in the jungle, goes for the double pull through the Elder Titan offlane, we should compare these two, how are they doing so far? He's actually level 4, so to be honest, Brax has had a great start to this game, he's level 4 and actually dead Soul even ring. with the Timber Soul, no, uh, yeah, just about even with the Timber Soul right now. Yeah, and he got a Soul Ring, I would say he's actually leading, he's got 3 CS and a Deny more, and Ice is Ice is getting a little more experience, but just by him being in the Radiant offlane and being tied with him is a really, really oh, great situation. Lanham! Oh, that's a big kill for Navi US, and it's going to be Brax claiming it as well, getting a lot more gold here. His Soul Ring is already on the way out. He's, he's going to be doing great on this lane, I feel. The last time we saw, actually, Navi US run offlane on it, it was them that I saw run it last, and the hero did nothing. It got completely zoned out, but I feel like that first Fissure block might just be... You know, what the doctor ordered. The other thing is, their dual lane isn't that strong early, at the early levels. The the Puck Alchemist is not a, a hugely high-octane killing combo. Once they get their levels on the Alk, I think they can, but 
Well, Braxis got the soaring, and he could just keep on spamming the spirit and get vision. So then the Alk will maybe have to smoke if he wants to go. Speaking of which, Lanham, I think the player to keep an eye on for DK now heading towards the top lane. Can they set something up here with the Timber Saw? He is level 5. If they manage to catch Fogged out with a stun, it's a definite kill. They've got plenty of pure damage going next to the trees here. They've Especially if they though. get a turnaround gank here, but... Oh, he's about to be revealed. Oh no, sorry, smoked up. Okay, here we go. Well, they could kill Weaver if they get a good duration stun off. He's only level 5. I think that's the harder kill because Shadow Shaman will just counterplay. He'll just yeah. shackle or hex the timber and Weaver will get out. They have to go on the Shadow Shaman, but I think Lanham gives up on it. It's not going to happen. Instead, he'll rotate out and ward, maybe look for another gank on Korog in the mid lane to really shut him down. And Korog has been doing a great job, I think. Having 11 CS at this point, I think, is perfectly fine. Actually, it's going to be a trouble. Here comes the crack. Construction. Well, it's something. They don't kill Korok, though. Finally, the acid spray, the Lich Blast, will bring him down burning. Straight morphing for all he's worth. There is a black hole. and. They're gonna use it now, I feel. Is it needed? Yep, they'll throw it out. They get the burning kill. And then 1437 keeps on channeling to kill off the wave. Why the hell not? Well, they do get a morphling kill. End of the day, that's that's worth it. That was a good trade for Navi US, especially if they put some on the tower. Unless if this happens, land him again. Old. Mushi's got old. He's gonna go in with the coil. Brax will pay. That's a really highly leveled offlaner. Doesn't get off the stomp. Down he goes. And the experience goes right back the other direction. Nice, nice, nice. Getting a bit across up top, but... Well, he's about to be ganked. Here comes the wraparound, 1437, a timely haste rune, and an untimely demise for Ice Ice Ice. He wants to timber chain through. Can he get it off? He does, but 1437 jukes it, still ticking out of the Maleficent. He comes back in for a oh, poke, and Korok out of nowhere. jams it in. A line of packages. Yeah, what is this? What is this cosmetic? Middle tower is under attack. I'm not a fan, I gotta say, I love most, almost all the cosmetics in Dota 2, but the Fissure cosmetics are too much. Here we go, Chain Frost mid, and they find the kill once again, another death for Korok, not having that powerful star he did in previous performances. And now, does Mushi look for more? He's got face boots. No mana to dive this one. So four for three for DK, off to a decent start here. Burning, leader on the farm charts as well from that dual lane mid, and they've chosen to rotate him to the bottom here to, to secure himself some more safe farm. As far as the offlane goes, we're gonna have a level 6 Timbersaw now coming in for Ice Ice Ice, who, given... Dyer's bottom tower is under I feel attack. like any sort of rotation right now from Alchemist top lane is a kill if he lands the stun. At this point, now that Timber is level 6, they can even burst the Weaver in one shot during that stun. As long as Shadow Shaman isn't ready for the counterplay, it's definitely a high-profile kill right now. The Weaver is going to be the big hero for Navi And US. he's going Midas as well, so if yeah, you can kill like him now, that's really yeah, good. That's a big... Playing the Midas is going to be crucial here, and... Especially since Burning isn't, so Burning will be going Treads first and trying to looking for a Fissure. Mid lane Here comes mid the Fissure, they find Ice Ice Ice, now hexed up, and doesn't really have where, anywhere to go. The Shackles will also connect and... Very nice kill by Korok's Navius. movement. Perfect Fissure. Really good movement. He's Korok been Shaker shut down mid, amazing but his movement's made up so for it. Yeah, and it's even after getting shut down mid, I mean, let's be honest, he was getting just destroyed, but... That's the power of the Shaker, If he, even if he has a bad start, he's still a great roamer. Speaking of great roaming... Here comes Lanham once again. Onto the bottom lane he goes, and he looks for Brax now. Will he find him? I think top lane might actually be the lane to watch. Mushi can get a three-man coil and has a level four orb as well. The TP in from Ice Ice Ice. Here we go, double coil. We'll jump in. Silence on three. Oh, it's a lot of damage in the follow-up. No, Echo Slam going to prevent it. Ice 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 oh! goes away. One more plank will bring him down, but Snake came the trade. Did he buy the Midas? I believe he got it in time. It's on the courier, so... I guess Crisis and now the bottom, bottom lane is the Here comes the outstone, the wave as well, a DK, they find four, Radiant and they only give up the fortified. timber, who to be fair, is having a rough game, but I think well worth the trade. Absolute great movement here from DK, this is a different team than we've seen in the two past games, they've stepped it up and they've had to do it, they're, they're delivering right now. Another guy who's delivering is 1437 in the mid lane, delivering a lot of damage onto the tower, but Lanham, with a defensive TP here, will hold it. Beautiful transition. Yes, that right. was that was a great A, for Thank sure. You. Thank you very much. I, I try. You, I you really delivered on that one as yeah. well. Nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> well, Snakey does get his Midas out for Navi US, but looking towards the mid game, Sin, how do you rate the two lineups? Like, we've gotten through the laning stage. DK have had a much better start than most games. Their Morphling's farming well. The Puck's gonna have a fairly quick Blink Dagger. In fact, very quick. He's up to 1,800 gold. And but he had phase boots, too. On the yeah, and really hard. so how do, you, how do you evaluate each team's mid-game strategies? What are their strengths and, and who's ahead? 
I would say definitely DKR ahead because Navi OS are way more dependent on blink daggers. Uh, the Shaker without blink I think is pretty underwhelming. We talked about it during the draft. Who's going to initiate and set it up? Yes, he can do a Fissure and they can maybe do the Elder Titan combo who actually, he did go for a point in Echo Storm on level 7. So they do have the combo you were talking about, but... I, I still think DK has more to play around with. A Puck with a blink dagger is a great counter player to a hero like Shaker, Shadow Shaman who could be the initiators. Uh, and Timbersaw, I think, is the one hero to really look out for. You saw the damage from Ice 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 in the top engagement. They were two heroes. It was the Timbersaw and the Puck who almost... The two of them almost killed three heroes before the Lich ported in and finished off the job. So, uh, I would say advantage DK. They're also getting the better farm. We've got a Smoke, or Enigma, or a Shaker. They're grouped up. It looks like they want to head towards top. They stopped off in the river for a moment. And here we go. Ice Ice Ice. He's rotating back, but if there's five here, and if he dies, the tower is definitely going down. Oh no, Fissure to start. Malphys to follow. Are they going to hold for this as well? Yes, they are. Kill secured. And now Navi US will look for their tower. And the Astral Spirit is finally going to return. It's crossed the entire map. The Radiant's top tower is under and now Brax is going to receive his bonus damage. we will probably like it in that gank, but nice rotation from Navi here, getting the, the tower. tower. Very, it's crucial for them to get map Dyer's control, I think. When DK are off to a good start, attack. and you know how well burning farms, taking out towers, taking them... Just making them uncomfortable moving around the map is pretty much the key thing to do at this point. And they really don't have much to do with the morphing though. Without the blink daggers, they just think yeah. can't deal with them. He's going to be a really big issue. Shadow Shaman is the greatest answer, but he doesn't have a blink, like you said. So getting in on burning is hard. And even though Navi US took the top tower, they almost traded the bottom one for it. Burning almost getting it in deny range here, but actually perfectly not doing it. Oh, and they're gonna do it now. If this smoke egg succeeds, at Dyer's least one tower, tower possibly even two will fall. With no black hole available, Navi US will have a much tif more oh difficult time boy, to Navi US are TPing in as well. Oh, oh, Fox Fox is in, is in trouble. The Mushi can go in. He fish his first, then he blinks in. He still finds Fog. The squishy Shadow Shaman. No match for the Pug. Oh, now Lanham him. stuns. Oh. We'll connect on Korok. They take the tier one while this is Dyer's going on. Burning secures the gold, now up to 1400. And they also get down some wards. Not sure if Navi US saw these. Sentries are available on Fogged, and he may look for a D ward soon. Mushi. Uh, he'll have to orb out. He's going to find a haste turn as well. And they got a full rotation. It's not only about the tower, but they, the entire Navi US team was down there in vain. It means Ice 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 gets some really important gold here in the top lane, securing his arcane boots as well. It's probably two or three creep waves for, for the cost of nothing here. So very good decision making from DK here. I guess if you're Navi US there, you completely understand their movement. They just weren't oh, ready for it. Oh, here we go. It's the Roche sneak. It's the dire advantage. They've got the wards. They've got the Enigma. He can do it by himself, but they'll do it quick with the wards. And into the pit they go. No radiant vision of this one just yet. They smoked in for it, and uh, DK are just going to have to give it away. They don't know, and even if they came now, it would already be too late. It's a great call from, from Navi in this situation. They were all bottom anyway, so they make sure they don't waste their rotation, but get something valuable out of it, something meaningful, while at the same time, Rax is putting some sort of pressure bottom, so with that lane being pushed out, DK still have to... Still have to push out their lanes again. It wasn't just a Roshan for the cost of a tower, because they did it while they had the lane control in their favor, so... Very, very nicely done here. Snaking with the Midas is going to get himself some more gold in the mid lane, but wow. Just look at the net worth, actually. That's... It's worth pointing out now how far Burning is getting ahead, and this is without a Midas build as well. Yeah, the Weaver has a Midas. He's still down. A 1,500 gold, 1,400. That is a substantial deficit for this early on. Well, here comes the rotation mid. They're going to stomp the wave to clear it out, and they have picked up a mech on Navi US, and that's the other big thing to mention with their lineup is even from a deficit, which right now they're down about 3k gold, it looks like, and 4k experience, they do have a really strong five man, and they may try to push that with this mechanism. That being said, I think DK have really good counter initiate with the Puck Blink Dagger as well. Let's see if they try to force anything. Bottom lane, looks like that's where they'll go. But in comes Lanham, and he's ready to fight. He's popped his ultimate. He wants them to go on him, and they're not really cooperating. They just Malphys, tower defended, and it looks like DK also backing off top. So both teams just dancing, but nobody committing as of yet. Uh-oh, mid lane Korok has lane. to get out of there now. Oh, he does have the Aegis, but they could just burn that here. No. They could probably force worth it to use it. it right away. I think they should have perhaps Oh, they saw that, Mushi. But... He poked his head out. Yeah, He'll back off. I guess DK worried about the counter initiation from Shadow Shaman, but they have a lot of burst damage between the Lich and the Puck. And that's one of the great things about running a support Lich. He's level 9 in a 14 minute game, which is very, very high. It's how it generally goes with Liches. And Lan is level 7 on the Alchemist. It's been one of DK's problems in the previous games that their supports just haven't get been getting the levels. 
But in this game, they're definitely up to par here. Good levels of both of them. Actually, almost keeping up with an Enigma for Navi, which is very impressive. Lich almost has the same experience. The other thing is, if this does go later, Alchemist is one of those supports that can transition into a very fearsome late game carry, even. Probably won't be the hard carry for the team, but can supplement the Morphling's damage, tank, and initiate with a BKB. There's a Spirit mid, MMY's got a juke that stomp, barely makes his way out. Uh, it would have been the death of him. And not only are they leveled sin, but they're far. Our, our Lich nearly has a mech. We're only 15 minutes in. Yeah. Kind of... Can they defend mid is the question I now. I doubt They won't even bother. That's a good last hit for Korok. I think it's good for him to get it instead of Shadow Shaman. Although Shadow Shaman could have also been pretty close to the blink now, but I guess the blink on Shaker right now is, should be one of the biggest priorities for, for Navi. I want to point out... The Alchemist set being used by Lanham. I think this is kind of... that's kind of funny, actually. He's using the full Alliance equipment from TI3. Maybe hoping for some good luck to come his way. The <laughs> old magic. They, they won life. last year, so... I mu it must be good. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's been playing well so far with it, so perhaps they just need to pick the, the heroes with the right cosmetics for them. Ice 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 is wearing his set, and he's doing great too. With uh, his 1, 4, and 2. <laughs> <laughs> he's not doing great. <laughs> that's not safe. He's that's actually true. been playing well. He has. He's he just has. been countered really hard, but yeah. this, is, this is one of those games where it's Radiant's just the proof that KDA is not equal to success. He's had a big impact in the game, actually. Well, and he might have more, as they're threatening the tier 1 top, and there's no Glyph available. If they go on this, it's going to be a disaster. Mushi's ready. The last Dyer's hit goes to Ice Ice Ice. And fallen. suddenly, he's up to 2,000 gold. Korok's waiting. He doesn't have a blink, though. Even if he goes in on this, there's some backup in tow, and they might lose Snake King. Mushi's ready in position in the trees. He'll actually timber chain out while Mushi jumps in, unloads the sons. Now the timber saw over the top needs to connect on this. It's too late, and now he's in too far, and now the backup swarms. Ice, ice, ice. He took too long with that chain. He just didn't have the angle, and now runs. But with the Weaver slowly ticking him down, he will fall. It was just a little bit unfortunate. The second he timbered out, chained out, that's when Mushi went in. Yeah, it looked like miscommunication more than anything else, because if Navi US wanted to go on him, it looked like. They used the Fisher, so he could have baited them a little bit longer and then have Mushi jump in, but they weren't really sure what they wanted. But bottom lane, Lanham is sure what he wants. He wants to drop the bomb. We'll do it. So DDM burning as well. He's going to melt through him. And, well, does he get it off? No, Chain Frost? That will clean the kill up. Uh, no, it's not the one they really wanted. They'd rather get the Elder Titan, but they'll, they'll settle for wards and a Shadow Shaman. It's basically two hero kills when it comes to the gold anyway. Oh, burning is getting so big. This is going to be a 17 and a half minute Lincolns without Midas build with Treads, Bottle, and Wand. It's looking really good at this point. And again, we talked about it. What are Navi's actual counters? They have Astral Spirit, which or sorry, Natural Order, which is going to be absolutely huge. But someone needs to do that physical damage, and Weaver just isn't there at all yet. It's it could take be the Earthshaker, but he's not farmed. That's the big concern. He does have the blink now, though. But with only one point in Enchant Totem, if he had four points in that, if he had been prioritizing that over Fissure, he could, he could take away half, if not more, of Morphling's hit points in just one attack with Astral Spirit on top. Yeah. Let's not forget about Frost Armor, though. It's the yeah. Ice Armor. It's already again. level 2. And now the Coil comes mid. They find Fog again, but he gets off the Hex. Great reactions for Fog. Now Mushi needs to orb his way out of this one. He doesn't get the kill, but he's got a retreat. He's got Phase Shift. He's got a Blink Dagger, but the Blink's gonna get disabled. Now Fissure secures the kill. And Navi US are just too quick. Great reactions there from Fog. And Mushi didn't get the silence off in time. I think if he had silence right away, they would have gotten that one. If Korok knew where Lanham was there, he would have probably killed him there, actually. Could have blink enchanted, but he went out of vision, didn't know where he went, so... This is all space created for Birdie, though. He is up to 9.2k, and his team is not completely behind like they were last game. So it still feels solid for DK, despite these, these few bad ganks. But Navi US climbing their way back into the game. It's a pretty, it's a pretty damn even game. I, I think these 4,000 experience and 2,000 gold don't really matter right now, because... It's all about who gets the right initiation. The Wombo combos on both sides are absolutely huge. There's so much AoE damage and control for both of them. I'm interested to see what approach Navi US take to this, since I, there's a cloak on, on 1437, so I'm thinking he goes for a pipe here. Is that the call for them to start pushing towers, or are they just looking at other objectives like map controlling and getting Roshans again? And what's their, what's their thought on burning, actually? They see his farm. They know this is a problem. But what's the response? They're not item building against burning as such. I think they, they, they're confident they can take Dyer's it late. The other thing that's great against Morphling here is Midnight Pulse, which they also have. So. That's true. 
Maybe they just feel the Morphling's not actually an issue if it goes late. Lanham gets caught out. He does have his ultimate, but needs to retreat now. As well, Mushi's uh -oh. coming in. Mushi's coming in. If you go on Lanham now, it could end very poorly for Navi US. But they won't commit. I think the con my big concern for Navi US is just how much the Pug can do if this goes late as well, in combination with the Morphling. The two of them can just run around. Any hero who's off on their own can be picked off. Navi US don't really have the mobility attack. that DK brings to bear. And if this is an even game late, even Timbersaw, very mobile, they can spread the map and, and they should be the ones who are able to control the tempo a bit better. Navi US, want the, Navi US want the team fights late game, and I think that's DK want the pickoffs and the split push. I think DK also want the team fights if the Lanham is farmed. Yeah. If they can just send the Alchemist in front with four items, maybe three or four items, he doesn't even need to be six slotted. The thing about having a four position Alchemist in a late game is that if he. If he leads the charge, and you know you kind of have to deal with him because he's actually pretty strong, the amount of space he creates for the other cores is just insane. And when you get run a support alchemist and you get away with it like this, and it doesn't look like Navi are looking to pressure at any point, I think just economic advantage, DK, even though they're up against a Midas Weaver, I don't, I don't think that's enough. Ah, uh, Mushi, he's camping out mid, and he's looking for an opening here. The Invis rune wearing off soon. Looks like he's going to back off. Doesn't find the opening. He actually hasn't found as many as I thought he would this game. 3-1-3, and three, which is definitely a solid performance, but... Credit to Navi US not getting caught out too much. Right as I say that, someone will probably get caught out. <laughs> oh, there's the stomp on Do they want to go for this? No. Uh, yeah, that, oh, top lane. This is where they want to go. It's snaking that Mushi's waiting for. As soon as someone shows up in this top lane, he'll go in. But meanwhile, the Echo Slam on to MMY. Fissure comes through as well. Korok passes. The Alk is going to stun himself, and do they continue the chase? It's really far. While Snaking still being hunted, but they can't find the opening. Snaking's playing this really smart. He knows, it's, he knows the risk right now with Mushi. Since Mushi didn't show in the mid lane when they initiated with the Shaker, he's probably hanging out top. He's been off the map for about 30 or 45 seconds, so the chance that it's the top lane he's in is probably the highest one. He... he... At this point, he won't be standing behind the Morphling. There's no real reason to, and with Ice 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 pushing up this far, it, it, it kind of looks like they're up there. to something. Yeah, either that or it's just Ice 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 being Ice Ice Ice. But bottom lane, they've gone in on Burning. They Fissure up to start the fight, and here we go. Well, do we go? Here we go. That's the question. Astral Spirit. Oh, baby. It's getting, it's getting hot in here. Orb coming through. Fog caught out in the trees. Well, he's dead. The question is, does he bait DK into a bad engagement? With the ward drop, they now throw up the Midnight Pulse, and the Black Hole comes instantly canceled by MMY. Beautiful reaction. Now 1437 plays the Fissure just a bit too late. And now Mushi's on the hunt. He orbs through to the tree line. He's not going to find anyone waiting there. And Man, that lich, the positioning was just pristine. And actually, this is the same situation where Vici Gaming's lich won them the game. Fenrir, time and again, was canceling Black Hole with Chain Frost. So we may see the same thing happen this game for DK. Yeah, this tower is probably going to go down as well. I don't think Navi US have what it takes to defend. Echo Slam's on cooldown, and he's actually even in the mid lane right now. Mushi going in on Korok, actually Dying dealing significant damage, but needs to be a little bit careful. Uh -oh. the tower. Uh-oh, uses the regen, blinks as well. And maybe now Mushi can turn again on Korok. He will have another orb. He's got an orb, but he's uh, not going to actually connect with this one. There's no fissure for a long time. Dying Mushi's going to continue pursuit. Korok, blink in one second. Mushi, blink is available. Oh. He's too late with the silence. Korok, one finger faster will make his way out. It was close, though, Sid. It that was, was really close. close. And if, if nothing else, what Mushi accomplished is he forced the Shaker out of the lane. And that means the tier 1 mid is now exposed as well. Navi US already moved down to the middle, uh, to the bottom lane to try to defend against the Morphling and weren't successful. That's two towers down. Deny attempt from 1437 not going to come through. Now, I'm, I'm still waiting for Weaver to become a factor. He has been part of 6 out of 8 on um, 9 kills, which is great, but we're reaching a point in the game now where Snake King needs to start dealing damage, but he went for BKB first. I think DK just ignored the Weaver, honestly. They let him run around, deal some a little bit of chip damage here and there, but he's not going to kill off this Morphling by any stretch. He's getting big as well. The, with the E-Blade coming out, that's where you check HP pools, and Shadow Shaman's an easy shotgun target. Weaver, if someone else can lock him down first, I think they could still kill him. But they need like an Alk stun around the trees, which is not the most reliable. And Earthshaker, not a solo kill with 1300 health, but if, if there's a plus one, that's where he dies. And there's no one hero in Navi US where like, he could just walk around and kill anyone. They don't have that same threat from a single hero. That's an advantage DK will have to work with.
Roshan trying to be snuck here by Navi US. I think this time DK realizes something is wrong though. They do have a replicate for another 15 seconds on burning. It's following through. It's the fake Ice Ice Ice. And Navi are sticking with this. This could be a huge mistake. Ice 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 is in a really good position here. They don't even have Black Hole and now and there go. you're trapped. Coil broken instantly. The stun connects on Spawn. Hits 14.37, then the Chain Frost, bouncing to and fro, braids down another two, and they're on the run at this point. They've got to get out of the pit, but Roshan's even working for DK, bashes Korok, and the follow-up is there. It'll be a waveform kill secure for Burning, and now an easy Rosh, three kills, maybe make it four, Fog caught out, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, should be fully next, and Snakey will try here. He wants at least to get Mushi for his team, he's got the vision, and he's going to commit to this kill. The mana pool is low for Mushi, and he's got the bug tip chipping him down. The creeps are trying to save him. Can he blink out? He can't. Snake King will get the kill, but it comes, it looks like, at the cost of a roach. And it goes to burning. And just as he gets the Aegis, he gets the Ethereal Blade as well. He and might oh, by be the looking way, for a kill immediately. He might know that Snake King is actually in the mid lane here, but the warding from Navi US is actually really good, so Burning would not be getting in there. Huge win for DK at this point. They even have a Shadow Blade on the out. That's how much farm DK is getting. And now they're up. 10k gold, 10k experience. Well, Finn, the Lanham draft seems to be working out so far. It's gonna be so hard for US to come back into this game. It's The problem is, the Weaver with this defensive item build, he'll need to get another damage item, at, uh, or he'll need to get an actual damage item at this point, but with how the game has been going so far, everything he farms, DK will just be farming more collectively. Timbersaw will be getting farmed at the same time, Morphling will be getting towards either a Manta style or a Butterfly at this rate, maybe even a Scotty, and the Alchemist, two points in Grievous Greed, soon to be three. He can, you know, if Alchemist gets two items more, he can solo the Weaver from full HP. Shadow Blade hit, stun, and then just maul away at him, especially if he chooses to get an Abyssal Blade or something the like that. The gem is a really nice pickup. Between yep. him and the Morphling, they can already kill the Weaver. And this is their one stun that kills him, is the Ox stun. They don't really have anything else that will deal with the BKB, but with this, Weaver can't feel safe to split push, and he needs to be split pushing if Navi US want to stall this game. It's going to be really, really tough. Burning, playing with a lot of confidence here in mid. He knows that if, if Navi OS are to kill him, they have to commit big ultimates, and he has the Aegis. So if that happens, they probably just trade the Aegis for a tier 2, which they're going to be fine with. Big item alert for Ice Ice Ice. He's going to pick up the Boots of Travel. And I mean, w he was 1, 4, and 2. It's a 20 minute, 27 minute game. He's now got an 11 charge Bloodstone, Boots of Travel, Ogre Club working on the BKB. And it's a good timber saw game with the BKB. We said it in the draft. He's playing against double melee and a timber, uh, sorry, and a weaver. He's, he, I think he's Navi going to have his gonna have to go for some, some sort of big play soon. I think just, just getting good farm is not good enough anymore. It's basically a quad core lineup for DK. Yeah, they have four carries. Alchemist and, and will carry a weaver late game. Lich is also one of the best late game supports just by virtue of how good ice armor is. Yeah, so. And they're, I, I would say, pretty reliant on physical damage this game, because you look at DK, and they have this huge AoE combo, and Navi... Oh, uh, Latim gets the stun on, on Brax. Will Puck follow through here? Mushi's thinking about it. I think they're going to disengage now, though. Are no. They, are they still chasing? Oh, Ice 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 with the, with the flank. Here comes the Weaver from the backside. He wants there. to go in. They're going to force a retreat out. Oh! oh shotgun! Almost killing Snakey instantly. He's already used the time My lapse. goodness. Burning fires a parting shot, and now they look for 1437. The orb will clash through. Connect oh, on nice earth splitter! Ah, uh, never mind. Not oh, nice Hex on the burning. Now land him on the chase. Waves over the top. He doesn't have a shotgun here. The Alk will stun himself. A rather chaotic and messy fight for both teams. The Weaver lives, but no BKB for some time. A full minute before he can use that one again. And That's a tier 2, I think. And they've got this Aegis for 3 Although, minutes. there is... Never forget the Korok. The Dunk. Dunk is available, but if DK played the smart, they probably just put the the Morphling in front. He starts hitting the tower, they can even use the Replicate to try to make a fake play here. And, and you can't go on the Morphling. No. You this, go on the Morphling, you're getting countered if you Ice 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 is actually starting to make a path out here, looking for Korok perhaps. But. He's playing the lore of the Timber Cell beautifully. He hates trees and he's here to destroy them all. Burning, looking for the last one on the tower, the Fissure will break the Lincoln Sphere, he waves over the top, and now Shotgun at the oh, ready, one for the out here, there's no here. 1437, look for the Shotgun burning, not throwing up enough damage it looks like, now the Timber saw jumping back in, Korok caught out, Chain Frost to fly, it bounces once, twice, that's it, but it's good enough, they get the kill, and now they look for more, they've got their agents, Burning's coming back, Snake Heat on the run, he time lapses, but he's still caught, even with the Sakuchi, it's not enough, Burning finds another kill, courtesy of Lanham's gem. A DK 
are rampaging over Navi US. They found their footing here, and they needed to find it right now. Six and five, in danger of falling to a 50% win rate, but now looking at their first lane of Rax, and if all goes well, a seven and five bounce back as day number three continues. This is reaching the point when it's almost impossible for Navi US to come back. Do they have a buyback on Weaver? Yes, they do. I think they have to go. They need to try to make a big play here with some sort of setup, but Enigma has a really hard time getting in. He's got Mech and Pipe, which is great, but he can't get into the fight. He doesn't have the Blink BKB build that you would need to go in, and even if he gets a Black Hole without BKB, the amount of counter-initiate, Adaptive Strike, pretty much instant cast, Chain Frost, Dream Coil, even an Alchemist stun charge for a the tenth of a second could stop them. The Pipe, there's a lot of magic damage, but there's... And so Pipe seems like a, a decent item, but there's so much that it, it almost doesn't matter. Puck alone can break the Pipe with his combination of nukes. Then you throw the Timber Saw on top of that, the Shotgun, the Lich Chain Frost, if they get good bounces. And the which Timber Saw, to a large extent, even ignores it. It's pure damage. It goes through it. Yeah. Only the Whirling Death will be will be magic damage. And only if you don't hit a tree. If you don't hit a tree. And honestly, you're usually going to hit a tree in these fights. Oh, it's... Even if he got BKB, there's still the Chain Frost to cancel Black Hole, but at least you you cut down on a number of ways that DK have to deal with you, and, well, unfortunately, they just don't have those openings. Now DK are gonna back off for now. There's really no hurry for them. They can keep on farming this one out. It's it's Navi US who feel desperate. It's Navi US who have to make something happen, and it's Mushi waiting to punish any aggression. Hides in the trees. And Navi US making their way up to the high ground, still searching for that opening. The stomp will go through on the creep wave at the tower. There's some split push from the Weaver bottom lane, but we keep our attention mid. Where Navi US is still fishing. They'll force out a TP, but Burning is perfectly happy to farm. He's only got two big items, looking still for the Mantle style and more to come, and Mushi is hunting him. He's gonna find Snake King now. Actually, he'll blink away. He got a little bit nervous there. Fissure the coming through just on the creep wave and well it looks like in the end the split push will be dealt with. The tower denied bottom lane by Bernie and they will end up backing off. It's I think it's time for DK now to go for for another objective. Or well, like you said, they actually don't have to, but they're in a position now where they could probably do it. It's I guess their mentality right now is, okay guys, this is a really important game to win, let's not make any mistakes. They're probably in a position where if they take a fight, they will win it, but the, the small risk of running into that Wombo combo that Navi US can pull off might just keep them playing it a little safe for a little longer. And they have to have seen the items as well. This Earthshaker yeah. has a Blink Dagger and a Staff of Wizardry. When Korok was carrying on his Earthshaker, he had a Heart, Four Step, Blink Dagger, and I believe a Refresher Orb in that game yeah, as well. Yeah, he got that in the end, I believe. And he just doesn't have oh, the snake. Okay. <laughs> The Adam's just bullying him. When the four position Alk is driving your Weaver out of his own jungle, you know you're behind. It's go time for DK. They just bought a BKB on Burning. That means they want to fight. Else he would have got the Manta style if he wanted to farm. So uh, One thing worth mentioning is that the Midnight Pulse does go through yes. BKB. So it's... I don't know if it works that way in Dota 1, but that is I'm actually a lot of damage yeah, against I the I think it did. It's universal damage. It's one of the very special damage types. There are only like four or five abilities Doom, in the game March that actually have it. Doom, March of the Machines. Doom, March of the Machines, Midnight Pulse. The initial stomp from Echo Slam, the base damage is universal. And the spread damage the spread is magic. spread damage is magic. That's, that's then, one of the weirdest spells in the game. I think there's one more, but it doesn't come to mind right now. I'm pretty sure there's a few. But there might also just be those four. Uh, here we go. Oh, I, 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 oh my god, the, the damage! Almost kills him off by himself. And now the coil on the Korok. They found their opening here. It's the Earth Shaker they want. The Earth Shaker they'll get. Korok will fall. No crit shaker for you, sir, says DK. And now Timber trading deep as Ice Ice Ice. And they only get the one kill end of the day, but they will back off. Content. Oh, no, they won't. No, they won't. So go for Fog. Mushi. He commits. The shotgun follow from Birdie. Fighting that kill as well. Now it's gone on to 1437. And once again, it's Ice 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 into the breach. Fishing for an opening. Black Hole no longer available. Doesn't have to modify for it. Could soul rate, but it wouldn't matter. They're hurting him back to the base. He'll never make it. Down he goes. Now onto Snakey. One more right click. He'll fall as well. It's an ultra kill for Mushi. The DD rune works its magic. A DK strike back. At the 11th hour, this looks to be their game, Sid. It really does. That's going to be the mid lane. I, do they have any buybacks on Navi US? No, they don't. Weaver just bought the Desolator, but you, you barely even saw him dealing damage. And it's nothing against Snakey's play. I just think the way the way the draft has been working out and the way DK are executing these fights, it's very hard for the Weaver to go in. And we were skeptical with the pick when we saw it. We were like, Weaver needs a lot of farm. Does he have time to come online and actually get that amount of farm? And now that he does, they've just lost out so much already. 
Navi US might have had to, in this game, go for an earlier impact hero than Weaver, who generally, because of his abysmal stat gains, the general Midas buildup, and the need to have at least two core items before you're really significant just might not have been the right choice this time. I think the other thing is we saw the solo main Earthshaker has its issues. It yes. just has it zero lane down. Control. It's zero lane control if you put the right matchup there. And Quark's played really well considering the matchup. Yes, but the nature of that matchup game. is you just can't do anything if you're up against the Morphling Lich. Morphling gets free farm and the Lich just keep completely shuts you down. Not on top of that, they were getting kills as well. As usual, I feel when DK wins, Lanham moves well early. MMY often there with him as well, and well, we saw Lanham was in the right place almost every time through this laning stage. Won at least two of the three lanes for them. And it might just be the recipe for DK to go a little bit back to their roots, perhaps, and try to play some some older classic stuff here with the dual lanes with Lich. We may have the seen some Shadow Demon Marana, perhaps. Yeah, that could be a choice, or Shadow Demon Kunkka, which IG have been running, which isn't really a classic, but it's something that has been used in the past a couple of times, and just giving... I feel like DK are a really strong team when... Just when they actually just don't lose the laning stage, they don't even need to win it. They're one of the best late game teams in the business. They just need to not be at a 15,000 disadvantage like they were against Titan. Then they're going to be okay. And so if, if they draft these roaming heroes that get a pick off here and there just to keep the game even, then burning will generally pull through in the end. And we're seeing it here. DK sieging the high ground. They're doing it slowly and carefully. No full commitment. It's Mushi waiting on the sidelines of the fight with a Hex who will look to start this one off. If he gets a good jump, he takes out a critical hero, Earthshaker, Enigma. Enigma probably the ideal target, that could really turn the fight. And even though they want to go on the Timber Saw, he's got Cheese, he's got a Bloodstone, a Plate Mail, and BKB. And it might even be Ice Ice Ice, who's the scariest hero on their team right now. Burning's got more farm, but this Timber Saw is going to wreak havoc if they don't bring him down. He's got 15 Bloodstone charges as well, so he pretty much almost instantly respawns. And remember his start. He had a rough game. Bottom lane, they fight Snake King. He's doing what he must, which is the split push. He can't just sit in the base, or the game's already forfeit. But you leave the base, and the Alchemist with a gem will find you. It's just an almost inevitable death, I feel, given the situation. And no buyback. That's well. Elena Rax. I don't. Even if they land their combo amazingly, I still think DK's got this. But actually, no. What's the hurry? They are We've got room for more items, says Ice Ice Ice. Yeah. Let's push out all the lanes, so even if we lose a fight, we lose nothing else. They might not know about the missing buyback, so I guess they don't want to risk it. And just showing a lot of respect to Navi US, to be honest, they know the combo is strong, and with Astral Spirit, of course, on top of it, that they can die. I'm not saying it's impossible. They go in now. If they no hex right thrown split. out just yet. They just need to do the right split. Land him doing some damage here, but damn, Midnight Pulse is just such a good defensive ability. It's so annoying to push into this. It really makes your life difficult. And I, I feel like DK are just thinking, well, we don't have to end this game now, and it's not looking easy. If we walk up the choke point, maybe it's like last game, where they should split, put the Morphly in one lane and four in the other. Because Abi US are much stronger as five. When they have the Astral Spirit affecting everyone, the Echo Slam that can go through on anywhere from three to five when you cluster up mid, and the Black Hole Midnight Pulse combo. Maybe they have to heed that strategy from last game that Titan took against them. At the end, it took them a while to do it. We'll see, for now. They have a bigger lead than Titan did, though, actually. That's it's true. 25k and 30k on the experience. And, and it's that's an where those shotgun Morphling who can pretty much one shot. Almost any hero on the Dire team that he wants, basically. They are putting Bernie bottom now, so it seems DK have decided on a, a slightly spread formation. He can join this fight easily, he's got a replicate in the mid lane that can provide assistance from a distance if needed. And he'll keep on pushing forward. Still, Navi US, they have held their base thus far, but they need the most epic of combos if they want to actually find something. And they're getting out farmed, because they can't go out of their base. The one time they tried with snaking, he got ganked, so... DK will just get more and more per minute, and granted that they have the better late game, I'm actually surprised to see Navi is not trying for it. Even if it doesn't look like the ideal initiation, if they could try to find like two heroes and just go in, they have to be feeling the pressure right now and the need to go. And DK will not be giving them a free opening because they... They're an experienced team. They know they know how to end games like this. They know what position they're in. The other thing... Or actually, rather, they know how to not end games like this, which sometimes is the better call. Like. If you're the defending team, the entire map is controlled by the enemy, and you cannot go out. You you just need to smoke and find a pickoff and try to find. They're looking some sort for of snaking. They've got the hex. If they can jump him now, uh, Mushi just waiting. 
He's got his opening, and they go in, but Karak yeah, yeah. was quicker! He connects with a big echo slip! That's on two! The follow-up's there! Ice, ice, ice! May also fall! It's a two for nil to start this, and Lanham's gotta run, while Burning pushes in the bottom side of the map, even though they lose two. It seems they may find their trade regardless. The tier 3 nearly taken out, but what a beautiful counter initiate that was by Korra. On oh, mid lane as well, Mushi's gonna get hexed up, and there's the Shekel as well. That's another kill! It's a gem down to boost, but Ice 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 returns. They have a black hole. Can they find the opening? 1437, four step, the wrong direction, just into the middle of the fight while Birdie BKBs pursues out Snake Age. They want the bug, they want the Weaver. Can they finish the job? The stun's there, the follow up, one more chop. It comes through, and down he goes. I feel Navi US played that perfectly, Sin, and still, they lose their Weaver, they lose their Shaker, they had to blow the Echo Slam in the wards, and now what do they have once the puck respawns? It's really good to see them going for the play, though. It's what you have to do in the situation. It's just too, they're just too far behind, but they're doing the right thing. If the Those reactions from Korok, that was legendary. Yeah, that was very, very fast. And so fast. Also, Fog following through there and, and catching out the puck, getting them a bonus kill. The one problem, I don't know if you noticed how much damage Burning actually took from the Weaver. He was under the Astral Spirit. He's got 32 armor, which isn't working under the Astral Spirit. So Weaver <laughs> he was... He needs the Frost armor. Weaver hit him like three times. I don't know if he had the Frost armor, because he was off split pushing. Bottom. I don't think he did. That's one thing they have to, it sounds silly, but they may need to just make sure the Lich gives the Morphling Frost Arm before he begins sieging the side lane. Because it can make the difference. They still have Black Hole. That's the one thing Navi US did not throw out in the last fight, and the one extra tool. We're also looking at additional buyback on Burning. And this may be the point, Sin, where they start stacking up cheeses and waiting for another Rosham, because there's not too much longer until the respawn can come. If Navios keep defending as well as they just did, then it might be a cheese that they're waiting for, but still a little surprised to see them not trying to use the Aegis. I think it expired about half a minute ago or a minute. Generally, if, you, if you're in that position with a Morphling this farm, you try to go for a shotgun kill. You just, you know it's expiring, might as well try. If it doesn't work, you, you'll just get out afterwards, but... DK are just playing it very safe here, probably waiting for maybe the Scadian burning, which is actually there in about a thousand gold. I think we see why they were playing so safe as well. That was, it looked like a almost unsavable Weaver, because if they just hex him, the shotgun comes through, he's just dead. There's no chance he gets off a BKB, but near the high ground, Navi US can ambush you with a lot of counter initiation. And maybe DK or Wise not. Oh, Snaking! This is the better opening. He's up on the hill, but there are four here. They're smoked up behind him. He's not alone. This is a gambit. But not one DK will take the bait for. They're saying there's no way Snaking is this cocky. There's no way he's alone. And there's no other heroes on the map right now. If he goes down even further, this may be out too far. The Enigma's still waiting in reserve, but they need more than that. They're going to need the whole squad. Lanham going into invis. He hasn't started channeling the stun for this. There's no gem. No detection on Navi US. They can't actually see the Alka if he jumps in. And they will back off. That was a very risky move to go outside the base with no detection. They have to. Uh, okay, they could have detection. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, they, they can't just sit in their base and wait. At some point, DK will all get six slotted if it goes on like this. It's a 35,000 experience lead actually at this point. The goal closing in on 30. And it's really... The good news is if they win a fight, DK will be dead for ages. Yeah. That's, the, that's the silver lining for Navi US. It's pretty impressive that Navi US are defending this, to be honest. They do have great base defense, but generally these 25,000 gold leads, that's when games tend to end, even if you've got great defense. It's just too much, but their lineup is tailored to do this, which is... It's going to bring me to my point. Why did they get a Weaver if they have an amazing turtle lineup and they want to play the late game was Naga banned? It was banned. It last was banned. Ban. It was the last okay. ban. Maybe you could. But have they could have fourth picked it. I don't think they had to. They could have fourth leave. picked it. They yeah. could have got like an anti mage if they wanted to play this. Oh, that's not really a super late gamer either. He's actually not that good in super late game. What else do we have? Spectre could have even been a choice. Like it looked to me like DK were showing their hand. They did not want to run any sort of aggression. Maybe you don't want to pick Spectre into Lich, but considering how the game is developed for Navi US, I feel like the biggest problem with their drafts is that they're amazing in late game, but they have no late game apart from a Weaver who. I think they were planning they on were the They were hoping Earthshaker. the Carishaker, but you pick that into Lich Morphling first. You, you know, know it's going to be a Lich Morphling miss. It's, 
I agree. It was pretty obvious from the beginning. So maybe next time go a little more greedy on your carry when you have this kind of defense. I mean, it's it's really impressive how they're managing to hold. But the, uh, all this setup for Weaver is he's he's not gonna he's not gonna pay it back. I think Weaver is pretty scary six slotted. But the other thing is they picked into a Weaver after seeing a puck, which means he has to go BKB, and that really stunts your late game progression. So. Uh, uh, not to mention the Alchemist getting a Shadow Blade isn't helping yeah. matters much. Mushi's all over the place right now. He's got a haste. He almost found the Weaver. And you can see Navios, they just like, they just poke out a little bit. It's Dyer's like a conga line of five heroes attack. just looking for the opening. But the conga line isn't working. They're not finding any pickoffs. And maybe now we see DK go. No, not yet. They're fencing. They're getting to that point. Heart picked up on the Timber Saw. Midnight Pulse is becoming even more important for Okay, w. so Ice 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 has 30 armor with Ice Armor on before reactive armor even kicks in. 24 is bonus. He is probably, I would say almost certainly more important than their work, but he's definitely a lot tankier. Oh, and they find Demon! 1437, he left the base. He may well pay. They throw everything right out the timber. Where's the backup? It's gotta come soon. Enigma's gone. There's no black hole. There is an echo. There's oh, the wow! Well, huge damage! Burning melts! That's not enough for DK! They're actually getting overrun! The Chain Frost comes through, there's no Timber, there's a buyback from the Morph who wants to rejoin the fight, and where's the opening for Bernie? He's gonna walk back down mid, he's not even close to engaging. What an Earth Splitter! What an Echo! The Torrens are holding on! They're doing it against all odds! This game is just Astral Spirit, seriously. <laughs> Earth Splitter, Astral Spirit, and the Echo Slams. That's bi they didn't even have a black hole in that sin, and the Morphle just exploded. They're gonna get Roche though, Burning Bot back, and with all these big ultimates used by Navi US, it will be the prize here for DK, but it's really impressive to see these fights. I... It's just such a cool lineup from Navi US, you almost feel sorry for them that they don't get to play this lineup from ahead or even terms, because that's when these explosive fights, you can just five-man wipe and actually go and, and run really aggressively, but... Like, imagine if the Enigma had a BKB. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. At the very least, he gets off a Midnight Pulse and tanks some damage there. Maybe he even fights a Black Hole. It's the Timber Saw that's the biggest threat. Honestly, the Morphling just explodes. You know... One of the ways that we've seen teams try to deal with the late game Elder Titan Morphly matchup is just get more plus armor auras. So Vlad's, they do have one of those. I've even seen a Morphling pick up an Assault Caress, which I honestly think is a pretty good choice in this matchup. You don't really need more damage. He already hits like a truck, but it also helps you break the base with the minus armor on buildings. We have not seen that, but I guess they do have the Alk, and, and he will be the one looking towards it. Bottom lane, this is where they go. Fog. Caught up by the Chakram. There's a black hole though. Are they going to commit it just for the Timber? So they really don't want to. 1437 blinks it, and he thinks a lot better of it. And he backs off. So they find a free pickoff. Albeit only on the Shadow Shaman. And they actually used the pipe and the mech for that. So DK might be able to try to go for high ground. But I don't, I don't even know when DK can go for high ground. Like, it seems like they can have all the odds in their favor. And then they and have Magnificent to finagle their way in. just makes them disappear. Maybe split pushing is the solution. Burning in the top lane, the others in the bottom lane. They don't want to burn don't their entire Stick around, Bernie. That was... He bought the... Well, oh, he's going to retreat out now. He's going to work his way through Brax and... Well, a wave form to the south. The team takes the bottom tower. He's kiting them like a magician, creating space. Their splitter comes through, but... Well, the Rack's already starting to drop pretty quickly. He'll come in for a plink here and there. The Enigma still searching for his openings, but Mushi won't let him find one. He's going to initiate. Can drop the coil if he doesn't get chain stunned. He will, though. He drops the gem as well. Look for the Enigma. He's trying to find that opening. Can't quite do it just yet. And well, in the end, only Ice 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 the, the opening. Not the one he wants. They'll be forced back. DK, they strike. They get their first lane of Rax here. And Snakey will BKB and chase. But it's on to Ice Ice Ice, who's far too tanky for this. They stun. The Echo Slam comes so it is on Bernie, but remember, this time he's got Aegis, even though the buyback's cooling down, and he's still alive. He shotguns Fog, he goes back in, it's just space created while the team gets out. He, he might die here, team. actually, if they have any sort of damage. Look at this damage onto the Morphling! They're gonna lose the Morph, but, well, Cinderin, now he's dead for 95 seconds. Is it enough? That's the question. Can they push out now? Bottom barracks. I don't really oh think God. they can. Honestly, <laughs> there's 30,000 golden, 40,000 experience behind, and they're still winning fights. They just can't do anything. They killed the Morphling. He's not even really the carry. It's the Timber Saw, the Alchemist. They're doing more in these fights, and Bernie is just drawing them back and distracting while the team does the rest. He's playing his role perfectly, and 
Navios just don't have great split push. They don't have great counter push. They have a Weaver who's all single target. There's no Naga this game. There's no PL. There's really not much to take advantage. They win the fight in some sense, but they can't capitalize. It wasn't even a convincing win at that. It's like oh. maybe a slight win. Oh, it's still pretty good. They got demorphed twice, which is quite an accomplishment, right? But what is Snake King building? A Lincoln's? <sighs> what? Why? They need damage. <laughs> they need damage. <laughs> I, I'm trying to like what's he is this is it the shotgun he's afraid of so that he wants to block it or the hex from puck Maybe I mean it makes sense if he can get into the if it secures him to get into BKB But you know, it's kind of weird to say they need damage when you see how fast the morphling falls, but at the end of the day Your elder Tainara does not work on buildings You're no, not doing their base quicker and they're that. putting so much pressure on themselves to play the perfect fight every time if they don't play the perfect fight he doesn't have enough damage. If he has, if he went for a Daedalus, for example, here, then maybe even though they don't combine their spells perfectly, he still gets like an oh, opening. Oh, Snake King! Times. He just bought a Lake. It's he can't die now. Can they break it? Do they have anything else to break it? Well, they need more. Chivas comes through, and oh, now they go. There's no hex. They just use that to chop through the Lincolns, and Snake King will time lapse and then retreat. Enigma's joining him as well. They're trying to give the king some support, and he will make his way out. They don't have, without the Morphling there, there's really not much to deal with it. Lich can as well, I suppose. Radiant's top tower is under attack. But it's like Lincoln's, then you need two more items. And then maybe yeah. the one fight can translate into objectives. Spy, rape your snaking. Dyer's I think he needs one. Do it! A big damage Do item. it! At least a Daedalus, but... It's not a bad rapier game, honestly. No game is a bad rapier game. Until you drop Every game in 60 minutes with Weaver is a rapier game. That's how it is. It does well, make your buyback time lapse a little bit underwhelming, though. Time was bought by Navi OS. What are they going to use it for? They're going to farm a bit of ancients here. The best thing for them is if they can somehow get out into their jungle and get a little farm. You see Enigma trying to find a bit here, one four three seven with the idle ones. But at the end of the day, without any sort of the problem is, like you said, every time the fight comes to them from DK, there's no collateral. They win a fight. When are they going to cross the river? It's it's a problem that they have to address at some point, and. When they start crossing the river, DK are still really far ahead. So they'll win the fight on their own turf. Uh, it's so hard for Navios right now. They're only down one lane of Rex. But it's just the nature of the game. At this point, before DK attempt anything, they're probably waiting for four or five buybacks. And making sure all the cores have them. And in comes Ice Ice Ice. Well, out goes Ice Ice Ice. <laughs> wow! He's leveling up the stake. <laughs> He uses his BKP. <laughs> oh, Mercy, uh -oh. please. MMY oh, drops the oh. ward. Are they going to jump him? This is a lich they're engaging onto, and they may lose their Enigmas the trade. But in comes Quark. Echo to connect. Ode and land him. The stun will come on himself, and he will go down. Ice, ice, ice. Oh, yeah, oh he, he can't the finish him. The chain frost is there again. Canceling the black hole and annihilating at least the Enigma. But do they find more is the question. The Morphling's gonna jump back in. Burning kills off one. Now looks for Korok, who's on the retreat out, and he's being pursued. And when Navi US are trying to run, they're gonna struggle against the chasers. The racks are exposed. Can they hold serve here? That's the question. Looking at buybacks, they've got it on the Enigma. But he's already used the black hole. He's not offering much now since. He'll buy back. Midnight pulse. Actually, it is Don't a decent amount. Midnight pulse. Here we go. Shotgun on the snake age. Just to try and discourage his aggression. Time lapse forced out, and now the chase is on. If they kill this Enigma again, they're really under the gun, and the dive begins. Not a full commitment, though. Just focus on the objective. Focus on the racks. The creeps are marching in bottom lane. At DK, they need a win bad, and they can tell. They can smell it. They can taste it. It's getting close, but it's not here yet. In comes Fogged again. Focus on burning. Eye on the prize. Can they finish him off? He's still got buyback. They're gonna have to f fight their way through him twice. They haven't done it yet. Korok, another stop. But Burning's gonna mansa dodge through it and blows up Snake King. The cane has fallen, and now the US are being overrun. In comes the spirit, still not enough. Morphling backing off, focusing on the range tracks. Now they go in again, they get the melee. The range dropping low, hasn't fallen yet, and DK will sound the retreat. They lost Ice 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 for that. They bought back on the Alk, but they force out two buybacks from Navi US. Navi US has to use Black Hole, and now it is tower defense the rest of this game for Navi. It's been tower defense for 30 minutes. <laughs>
or at least for 20. <laughs> now it's real. It's, this is like level I don't 100. Think, I don't think I've ever seen a team defend this well with a 40k deficit. 40k gold, 30,000 experience, and they're still holding. Navi are actually playing absolutely incredibly. I think they're playing better than DK right now. Like, they're, they're playing better, but they're just so far behind that they can't win. But they're, the way they're rotating their four staff usage to get heroes out of trouble, the way they combine their abilities, their movements, the way they make decisions based on when to initiate, how to use their cooldowns, it's top tier play. But they lost too much early on, and this is not top tier play. Snake King, Snake King don't die now, my friend. You can't afford it. Planet will BKB. So oh he boy, that was so. really close. That would have been the the game right then. He does not have five. He's got off. a four second. I don't know. BKB. It maybe wouldn't have been game. Like it's, it might already be. He doesn't have buyback, so that's probably it. There's no black hole. No black hole. No weaver. And well, we could see Ooh. TI4's had some longer games. It's been uh. It's, it just shows, I think, how close all the teams are at this event. Longer games generally, to me, mean teams are more evenly matched, more than anything. But, well, that's a story for another day. For now, it's all about DK. They'll wait for the Roche. And Burning. He's got another Eagle song here. Probably looking at the completed Butterfly. Is and this, buyback still available. This has to be on the top of all-time last hits on Timbersaw. He's out-farmed the Morphling. He's, he's creating a lot of space here as well. It was an offlane timber saw with now 500 last hits. And he's been died. He died a lot in the laning stage. He has stage. eight deaths in total. Four of them was in the A lot the of them have created space, though. Even Burning's deaths, I feel, or distractions have created space. It, the carries are just drawing the enemy team around while the rest of the team works on the buildings. And they need it, too. They get a butterfly now on Burning. And with this, the base will fall a bit faster. A lot of attack speed, and a decent amount of extra damage for his illusions. 40k gold, it's official. This might be the biggest gold lead I've, in the history of Dota. Definitely the biggest I've ever seen in a game. I think I've seen a bit more than this, but... It's up there. I don't think I've ever seen 50, so All can right. DK do it? Well, DK, can, can they, they stall this game long enough to <laughs> create some records? Make the make it happen, DK. Your fans are praying. They know the Roche is up now. And I think the fans are praying for a victory, not for records. But <laughs> records I and mean, victory—that's the the best of yeah, both worlds. Yeah, that's true. Then. By the way, there's also an Axe on Lich. We haven't had a chance to talk about that yeah, at he all. Just, he just got it. Okay, actually, he hasn't used the Axe Chain Frost. So, yet. so we could see the Perma Bouncing Chain Frost. Would be exciting. Dyer's top barracks are oh my god, this timber saw, I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this. 4,000 health, 31 armor with ice armor, that's without his reactive armor at all. And the range racks not He's fall. got more than 50, yeah, they're gonna get in. And Roche will fall, he just goes to Mushi, who's gonna get the cheese? They're gonna give it to MMY. I like this, Mushi is the one who's gonna jump in and start the fight. He's generally dying, or he's, he's got 40. Stay king, stay king! Uh, well, four second BKB down. Not well, that's 50 deal. seconds of downtime. He wanted to go out and buy his Demon Edge, I guess, but DK aren't letting him. He can't get out on the map, so... He should just buy the Crystal in base, so he has some sort of value, because the fight is coming up now, and he needs to have every single bit of damage that he can get. I love the stay gun for my side sights. It works really well with the Morphling. It's one of the best luxury e items zap. on Timbersaw in the late game. It's really good. Since you stay alive for so long and you jump around a lot, you, you always, you're always in range for a target. You don't need any more tank items. It's just an additional bit of burst. A quite significant bit when it's taken level 5 as this is, so... It's generally one of the better late game items. Oh, there's the Hex that goes on to Burning. He does have buyback mail, but oh he my it. God. Oh my god! Splitter! It's all used just for the B-God. But now he buys back. That was only Echo Slam and Earth Splitter. They still have Black Hole. They still have Master of Wars. By the way, the Veil on Fog, I don't think we've talked about really, amplifies their damage a lot as well, and... Well, if they get Burning again, then I think DK will have to retreat once more, but... Then I think DK will just wait for the buyback cooldown. I think this is where it all ends. Well, Navi US, now they have to defend. This is their last lane of Rax. Lose this without a trade, and it's checkmate. The, they'll even use the Replicate to Siege. The Alchemist will be the one in, but not the real hero, just the Illusion. Why commit when you could just chill? Land him. He'll slap chop it down. One more right click. Uh, they'll have to deny it now. And stay king. He'll accept the tower's fate. Down it goes. But she's still waiting for his opening. And there's really no hurry, Sid. They can let the creeps push in top and bottom. And another zap. 1437. He's got to go in soon. He's looking for a black hole. Is he going to find a good one? No. He's going to be forced to use it. Actually, the Alk's going to solo him. 
the Bash Bros descend, and the Enigma's the price. And this is with Rax mid, now exposed, still not taken though. Buyback from the Enigma. They'll reset. They'll look for round two. Navi US. Holding strong for now. Where's that Hexamushi? It's well, not gonna do anything here. He'll be forced back. It was cooling down. Just buying time while this the creeps so watch real. this up. This is it's like unbelievable. The longest game of power defense over. you will ever see. It's not over yet, but it's getting there. One by one, objectives fall. It may take 10 minutes in between them, but it's always DK taking the objectives. Now the US, it's a grueling effort to hang on. Again, Ice 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 into the front line, just zap Brax and look to go. Finally, Burning commits, but they gotta be careful! Burning doesn't have buyback, the echo oh, there! No! What an illusion! What a disaster for Korok! Not with the doctor ordered for Navi! And now they're being run over. Mushi takes a few auto attacks, they still haven't actually taken the wreck, snaking! Driven back to the well, the Chakram comes out, zoning them off. That's the third lane of Rex. Exposed, melee brought down, range through to follow. They're kiting around these timber stops, the Elder Titan stops. They can't do it. DK finally get a win on day three. But man, did they have to work for it or what? Oh, that's that was exhausting just to cast. That was a really, Jeez. it was a pretty amazing game to watch just because DK play. DK play a clearly superior early game, great movements, great decision making, they get the objectives, they get extremely far ahead, and then with a 25,000 gold lead, they struggle to end the game for 20 minutes straight.